And welcome to the night to night sh shift. We are here at Edition Fin Financial Arena. I'm Nick Porcelli. I'm joined with Bryson Turner. Bryson, that was a tough one. Heartbreaker. UCF falls to number 17 BYU. BYU. Give me your reactions. How are you feeling right now? Honestly, it's very conflicted. I think it was yeah. another very electric atmosphere here at UCF basketball and given the ha the history with UCF's fans and, and basketball the, uh, the support seen here is always amazing to see and gr and hopefully it'll keep up despite the result of this one but I think that it, if anything I'm, I'm thinking of Johnny Dawkins's words after the Candace win we belong and I think that even though they fell behind in this in this matchup UCF belonged in this matchup against BYU. Unfortunately, they just had some shooting struggles tonight that ultimately did them in late, despite a late surge. Yeah, I mean, you, first of all, you mentioned it. Another great crowd. It's really great to see. You got the stats there. What was the attendance tonight? 9,137. It's Two. another over 9,000 crowd. Yeah, that's amazing. Students had the prawns out. Fear the prawns were starting a new tradition. That's always exciting. It worked when they were over there. You know, BYU was missing some free throws. But like you said, they were in the game with another good team. I know some people are probably going to tear, you know, ignore that because it's like, we beat Kansas. This isn't about staying in the game. No more moral victories. We're still new, you know? And the fact that we stayed in, stayed in with a good team like BYU, a team that's hungry, coming off two straight conference losses, you know, I think that is a good thing. But And they did belong in this game. But to me, the fact that they belonged in this game also is what makes this loss a little tough to swallow because they could have had this. They were down by one with like about like what about a minute left. It was just like you said, sh shooting. That was their issue, and you know we should probably highlight that now. Twelve missed free throws in a game that was ultimately decided by five points. The players were saying it at the, at the post game, which you can see on our black and gold banner at YouTube channel. Bing, you know that that was hard. You know if they make just you know a few more of their free throws, you know Particularly they, they the probably first missed half. game. Especially the first half, yeah. That is, we should point that out. You know, they got better in the second half. You have the stats. Like, what was the difference in the first two halves? It was 5 of 13 in the first half and then 16 of 20 in the second half. Much improved in the second right. half there. But those, still, the ones in the first half came back to kill them. You know, they could have, they really could have used that. And not to mention, you know, unfortunately shooting threes wasn't that good either. They, were, they only made three. How many did they shoot? They shot 18. I mean, BYU, the three-pointers are their bread and butter. Now, according to Coach, they actually shot less three-pointers than they normally would shoot. Which That's the coach seems, from BYU, by the way. The, yes, Coach from BYU. He seems, so it seems like the UCF defense did okay with defending BYU at the three for them to shoot it less. But yeah. at the same time, you know, BYU still landed nine three-pointers compared to UCF's three, which also definitely does not right. help matters. Well, like, but that's one thing we need to be clear. The, the defense from UCF is not at fault. They played great today. I mean, they, especially in the rebound category, 44 rebounds. They out-rebound BYU. Ibrahima Diallo, 19 rebounds. That's like tied for, what did you tell me, like ninth? That, that was the, it's the most rebounds that a UCF player has had in a single game since Taco Fall in 2019. If you want to count Division I era only, it is the third most rebounds in a single game in program history. And it's tied for seventh all time, including the pre-Division I era. Right, so the defense played great tonight. Like, they are what kept them in the game. And that just makes the offensive struggles a lot, you know, hard to, harder to swallow. And the team admitted this. Like, apparently with... They were all saying after the game they were coming out here trying to get some extra free throws. You know, they, they could have won this game, and like they were saying, they they probably should, and that, that is going to sting. And what's probably going to make us sting a little bit worse, they got a tough road trip coming up ahead. Well, hold, well, hold on there, Nick. Don't for, Let's also not forget the season low in assists. Oh, because... I, I shouldn't. I, I want to forget that, but you're right. We shouldn't. <laughs> yes, no. Six assists. Right. It, th Six. This team seemed to really have some trouble passing the ball tonight, I think. And uh, and I. it's funny. I mentioned this during football season, and I, and I kind of saw a little bit of that tonight, and that is hero ball. I saw a lot of a lot yeah. of holding the ball and just trying to charge for the basket may, and, maybe get a fa and maybe get a foul. That didn't work yeah. for it some of the time including right at the end they, I mean they said they didn't they don't intentionally go for the foul but at the same time you know if you are going for a shot and it a shot and then fouling seems like the more likely option then that's just a bad shot to take yeah I'll agree with you a lot of players Darius Johnson in particular who still had a great game on the score night how many did he have 18 18 points but you know he would drive in a lot and you know turn the ball over it, it, it was a little they, they, UCF's offense could look a little sloppy, and I think it, that's because of what you said. They're trying to play hero ball, but we have to hope that stops because that was what I was trying to get before you had to remind me of the six assists, which breaks my heart. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, tough road trip. 
They're up to Houston. They're up to Texas to play Texas and Houston, two ranked teams, two really good teams. Having two back-to-back -back wins here would have been nice, but going into that, that's going to be a challenge. What does this team need to do, do differently on the road, especially after, considering the last time they were on the road against Kansas State, that was a bloodbath. Well, I think for one thing, they, I do would like to see an improved performance out of their bench now. Coach Dawkins did say that by design, this game was not really one that lends to them playing like 10-11 guys, unlike the Kansas game was. But that said, the, the bench performance said that the, these players did turn in, the four players that come in off the bench, only one point among all of them. Yeah. I don't I don't really care if your bench is, what, is five players or one player. You really want to get more production from your bench than that. And so I think that's definitely going to be something we we want to see want to see there. I also th th think the atten the, the assists. I think that's going to have to change. I think this team has to be able to either imp either pass the ball and but also improve at it. I could kind of see maybe them trying to play hero ball because I did notice that they kind of did that more in the second half because the first half there was some kind of some turnovers they gave up because of a couple of of errant passes and so be and I think I can sort of see a reaction to that where you hold the ball later in in this in the second half so I think working in practice this team is just gonna have to really work on some basically some practice and free throwing some very fundamental stuff in in basketball and sometimes that just kind of happens because of how fundamental it is sometimes every once in a while you can lose it and it can end up really biting you in the butt like it did today and you can't make these kinds of mistakes against Texas and Houston heck you can't make them against Kansas either if this team went up against Kansas though then again that was a whole different game plan so maybe it's got comparing apples and oranges but if you t do that this type of performance against Kansas you lose that game now and you're not gonna have that screaming crowd like you did well they're going to scream at you it's just a bad kind of screaming yes yeah. so they're, they're, they're no not going to have only booze they're not going to have that supportive crowd with them out in out in texas and especially not against houston who who of course is a very familiar face for ucf to play so if they want to i would just say you're looking for a good performance and if maybe if you want to pull off an upset you're going to have to improve on these assist numbers and definitely and definitely on the on the free throws i'll tell you what these next two games, I think, on the road are going to have a chance to really define what this team is going to be the rest of this year. You know, can they win? Can they overcome a huge loss like that, what they just had here tonight, and win in some hostile areas, you know? Or at least compete. Yeah, or I at mean, least compete. Remember, Houston is the number two team in the country, and I feel like that we should really treat that game, at least coming into it, the same way that a lot of people treated the Kansas game coming in. Because a, a lot of people, right. I feel I feel like that, you know, Kansas definitely came, you know, came very much out of a surprise. I think a lot of people did did not expect UCF to come out the way that they did. And so I think this with this Houston match, you know, you don't want to over over inflate expectations after that Kansas game. But at the very same time, you want to see if they, if they can compete. And I think that's going to be the big thing. I want to see, it, 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 as far as defense, defense, and then a competitive level, I want to see the, the use, that, that UCF team from tonight in the games against Texas and Houston. Essentially, just improve on offense. Keep what you're good. Keep going on defense. Defense is, don't shake. I have no notes. Keep going with that. But on the offense, we just need to see that defense plus that uh, plus an improvement on these free throw and offensive statistics. That's what you're going to have to do in order to succeed and be competitive against these Texas yeah. teams. Right. You know, like I said, you know, what they do on the road could really turn this around. You know, it's a, it's a disappointing one tonight, coming in with such hype, not only beating Kansas, but also with the Mikey Williams news. Uh, for those asking, we have no updates. Coach was asked about that in the, in the press conference. You can't call him on, the, on that due to the, it being an NCAA violation. But still, you know, People were talking, it's a lot of hype. This would have made it grow. Kind of brings it down, I want to say crashing back down, but you know, brings it down a little bit. But this road trip uh, has a chance to maybe change that, and it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But either way, as for right now, tough night here at Edition Financial Arena. Bryson, where can they find you on? find you on Twitter. You can find me at, at it's Bryson, Turn, at Bryson Turner where I will be at the ES back back at the ESPN Y World of Sports tomorrow as the, as while all of this was going on in Edition Financial Arena, the UCF cheerleading team made it into the finals uh, with the best score in the semifinals of the cheer category uh, a, a category in which they have three national championships in their his, in their history. So we could be looking at a potential fourth one. We'll see how they perform tomorrow along with the UCF dance team. All that's happening at the ESPN Wild World Sports and I will be down there tomorrow evening. That's good to hear. We need some good news. Uh, as for me, you can find me on Twitter at, it, at Nick Porcelli2. Be sure to follow our guy Eric Wilfes, who was here with us tonight. Follow him on Twitter. And be sure to follow the Black and Gold Banner Red on Twitter, as well as through all our socials, Instagram, Facebook, 
threads, and of course, visit blackandbullgannerit.com. For Nick Purcelli and Bryson Turner here at Edition Financial Arena, thank you for watching.